What's up guys, Wilson here. The NBA playoffs, where basketball truly matters. Pure entertainment the next two months, guys looking to make huge names for themselves, role players looking to become the next Robert Ory. But before I cover all the excitement for this coming postseason, given my NBA history knowledge, there's been many cases where teams unfortunately lose their final game of the regular season, leading them to be bounced earlier than expected. I'm not saying any of these teams I'll mention would have won a championship, but instead of falling in first round, make a serious run to the conference finals perhaps had they not lose their 82nd regular season contest. This video dates back to the start of 1990. How about the 93 Houston Rockets? 55 wins, a huge turnaround season for Hakeem after two straight missed playoffs, intense contract negotiations, trade rumors. Prime Dream eventually settled and snapped out of the negativity, focused purely on dominating the court, improved his team win totals by 13, once upon a time, the hottest name in the trade market, the middle of Hakeem's prime, averaged 26 and 13 over 4 blocks, won his first Defensive Player of the Year award, second in MVP behind Barkley, finished ahead of Jordan. However, Houston lost their final two regular season contests, the second to last to the awful 11 win Dallas Mavericks. 128-123. Winning this contest alone would have given the Rockets 56 wins, guaranteeing them the second best overall record in the conference, having home court in round 2. While the Sonics lost their 82nd game to Golden State, Hakeem a chance to beat a good San Antonio team on the road, had a magnificent 38 points, 13 rebounds, 7 blocks and 3 steals, outplaying David Robinson, but lost a nail biter 119-117 in OT, tying them with the Sonics record wise overall. Seattle won 3 of the 4 regular season matchups, the team in the West being Houston's kryptonite. Rockets enter the playoffs, ousting the Clippers 3-2 in a best of 5, an 84-80 narrow game 5 win took a toll entering the semis, forcing to fly to Seattle, playing game 1 of the semis just 2 days after closing out round 1, each team protected their home floor, non compared their first 6 games. Leading to Game 7 on the road, Houston a 10 point lead at the half, but Seattle's second half surge sent the game to OT. With under half a minute left fourth quarter, rookie Robert Ory gave the Rockets a 93 91 lead, but Ricky Pierce drained the fade away over Vernon Maxwell. From these four teams starting out the season playing in Japan 94 games prior, last regulation possession. Dream triple team, Maxwell one dribble, Kenny Smith misses the baseline jumper, Rockets down 2 in OT, Hakeem missed a crucial free throw, Sam Perkins drained a turnaround J, put Seattle up 3, Dream then quickly scored, Sean Kemp missed both free throws, Rockets a chance for the lead, Maxwell's pull up jumper short, but under a second to go, a golden chance, Kemp rebounds, gets fouled, makes both free throws. Hakeem misses Desperation 3, giving Seattle a matchup with Phoenix in the conference finals, a series they lost in 7. If it wasn't for the regular season losses, or if Houston just had home court advantage for Game 7, they likely beat Seattle. Having a long series with the Suns, a team they eliminated each of the next two postseasons, these 93 Sonics might have stopped the Hakeem vs Jordan's finals matchup. MJ's Bulls struggled against the Rockets, winning just one of six regular season meetings when matching up during their first three-peat run. The 93 Rockets, a season of missed opportunities at its finest. The 2002 Philadelphia 76ers For those wondering what happened to Iverson's Sixers after the incredible 0-1 finals run, the city's passion and love for their superstar icon makes Prime AI squad the most beloved non-title team Philadelphia's ever seen, playing with all heart, hustle and grit, captured the spirit of the city. 23 years later, Philly fans still get jitters witnessing the Iverson experience. But little did the fans know, things took a sudden turn after 2001, Philly won 13 fewer games, injuries to AI, Aaron McKee, Eric Snow and Derek Coleman. Team nowhere near the same, tensions between Iverson and Larry Brown flared, lost the final two regular season games, won to the 21 win Bulls, while the Hornets won its final two to win 44 games, instead of having a 4 vs 5 matchup with either the Magic or Hornets, both those teams way more beatable for Philly, having to face a hungry, Young Paul Pierce Celtics, a player whom Philly passed on in the 98 draft, a brutal 33 point game 5 blowout on the road best of 5 series, instead of a first round exit, we could have seen an AI vs Jason Kidd semifinals matchup. 
Had they just won one more regular season game, a series the Sixers likely would have lost in 5 or 6. The 2003 Portland Trail Blazers could have played the Timberwolves round 1, still not having home court, but way easier and more beatable matchup than the 60 win Mavericks led by Nash and Nowitzki. Despite the off court troubles and terrible reputation, most remember as the Jail Blazers, unlike the modern day Charlotte Hornets. These Jail Blazers were ridiculously good together, led by prime Rasheed Wallace, Derek Anderson, Fonzie Wells, and the near retired Scottie Pippen. The team needed one more win to secure 51 W's. While the Lakers won 6 of their final 8, including their last 2, a 107-93 loss to the 27-win Clippers wasn't a good look for Portland. Given Minnesota with Garnett, a franchise that failed to get out the first round for 6 straight seasons, the Lakers knocking them off made it 7 straight years. Blazers fell 3-0 to Dallas before forcing a Game 7, had a chance to become the first team to come back down 0-3 and still the closest to do so. Having a 2-point lead after 3 but the trio of Nowitzki, Nash and Nick Van Exel caught fire, scored 33 of Dallas's 36 in the 4th quarter resulting in a 107-95 win. The big bodies of Sheed, Zach Randolph and Sabonis could have bothered Garnett had they played Minnesota, a super winnable series, before eventually falling to Duncan Spurs in the semis. These Blazers simply responsible for Kobe and Dirk not playing each other in the postseason until 2011. 2004, one of the craziest final nights of regular season ball at its greatest. Little did anyone remember, the Sacramento Kings had the one seed pretty much locked up up until the return of Chris Webber. Back from knee injury, Prime Stojakovic in MVP conversations. Team went 48 and 16 overall, less than six weeks before the playoffs, but fell to 7 and 11 the final 18 games after falling two straight to Minnesota and Phoenix. A pivotal ABC Sunday matchup with the Lakers. Both entered the game 54 and 25, looking to clinch a top three seed. Sacramento put on a masterful defensive performance, a 102-85 wire-to-wire victory, held Kobe to one of his worst games, eight points, playing over 41 minutes. Doug Christie scored 21, Weber 25. A tie in the standings would have given the Kings the edge over the Lakers due to winning three of his final four regular season outings. An afternoon that anger Phil Jackson and the squad. Tensions between the Lakers locker room. Kobe did say we'll be fine. Sacramento on the other hand not so fine. Worst case scenario turned out for them. Falling to Denver with Weber going 9 of 25 and losing to 37 win Golden State their final game. C-Web shot 7 of 19. Choking two away along with Kobe's confidence approach, playing two of his best games of the season to follow, rally for a 109-104 win on Golden State to keep the Lakers hopes alive for a Pacific Division title in a game the Warriors led 65-49 in the third. Had a 5 point lead entering the 4th, Kobe of course led a huge comeback, scored 16 of his 45 final 12 minutes despite the victory. The Lakers could only win the division title if they beat Portland the very next day and the Kings lose out, which led to one of the most iconic Kobe moments the year before. It was the Lakers who prevented Portland the fifth seed. Intense talks about Ruben Patterson being the so-called Kobe stopper. LA came back in the fourth quarter. Bryant hit a ridiculous, heavily contested, impossible three to tie. Having a game high 37, played all 53 minutes, down 2 in overtime with the Pacific Division at stakes, 2.2 seconds left after a Damon Stoudemire layup. Peyton inbounds the ball, the rest was history. Peyton to inbound. Bryant for 3. Both Lakers and Kings advanced to the semis, LA beating San Antonio in the drilling six game series, while the Kings blew a 10 point lead game two with four minutes left to Minnesota. Wolves went on a 16 1 run to close out with clutch Sam Gasell making huge shots down the stretch. Sacramento easily could have been up 2 0 going home for games three and four. Series went all the way to seven, not having home court. On Garnett's 28th birthday, Stojakovic went cold, 8 points, 3 of 12 shooting. Big ticket fill up the stat sheets, one of the most dominant Game 7 performances. Unofficially ended the Chris Webber, Sacramento era. The ending of regulation came down to Webber's missed tray. Had the Kings faced San Antonio round 2, the Lakers would have met Minnesota. This could have resulted in the conference finals, LA where Sacramento showdown. 
Weber's eight-game suspension due to a failed drug test, team chemistry took a massive hit. 2009 New Orleans Hornets, 7th seed, falling last two games, allowing Dallas to get the 6th spot, a team they beat 3 or 4 times in regular season play. This was not the same OA Hornets with Tyson Chandler, David West, and Peja regress a little bit, had a chance to lock up the 6th seed so they could play San Antonio, a team that heavily declined. After taking them to 7 games just a year before, those Spurs got upset by Dallas in 5 round 1. New Orleans a 20 point loss to the Rockets game 81, followed by an overtime loss to San Antonio. The last regular season game, thanks to Michael Finley's 3 point shot to force overtime at the buzzer, resulted in a 5 point blown lead in OT with 47 ticks left plus missed free throws. New Orleans proceeded to get absolutely embarrassed by the Nuggets round 1, including a 58 point blowout massacre disaster. Even if the Hornets lose to a team like Portland in round 1, it wouldn't have been humiliating as the Nuggets. The 2010 Denver Nuggets. For those wondering what happened to the conference final squad that battled Kobe's Lakers the previous year, coach George Call unfortunately had throat cancer. Adrian Dantley took over. After starting out 47 and 22, Team finished 6 and 7 to end the season, including a 22 point loss to Phoenix in the finale, which clinched the number 3 seed for the winner. Those Suns end up knocking off the Blazers round 1, advanced to the conference finals, giving the Lakers a competitive 6 game series, while Denver had to play Utah in the first round, resulting in too much iso ball. Absolutely dominated by Paul Millsap, Nene out game 6 with a knee sprain, elimination game 6, Melo shot 6 of 22, the loss didn't go without J.R. Smith having a few with the coaching staff, the whole team couldn't get it together, another first round exit guaranteed Melo's time in Denver was gonna come to an end, Denver would have fared way better against the Blazers, a super winnable series, followed by facing San Antonio round 2 who got swept, two super winnable teams could have resulted in the Lakers conference finals rematch, an unfortunate tenure Nuggets fans had to endure. 2015 San Antonio Spurs, the biggest definition of getting screwed over in the super loaded West, the defending champs won 55 games, somehow got the 6th seed, an absolute travesty! Finished one game behind the two seed, the two seed, losing to New Orleans the final game who needed to win clinching the 8th and final playoff spot. These Spurs would have gotten the number 2 seed with a win over the Pelicans, but forced to play the Clippers round 1 while the weaker Blazers snatched the 4th seed due to winning their division. The defending champions forced to take on the hungry prime CP3 and Blake Griffin's Lop City Clippers, a series that went down to a decisive game 7 on the road leading to a Chris Paul game winning banker. Had San Antonio been the 2 seed, would have easily knocked off a disgruntled Rondo's Mavericks first round and likely gone to the conference finals to face Golden State given they would have had home court advantage in the semis. But a multitude of injuries beginning of the season with Kawhi Parker and Ginobili missing double digit games resulted to a poor start. The result and competitive nature of this series forced the NBA to change seeding rules with the division winners no longer awarded an automatic top 4 seed and each conference will be seeded from 1 to 8 based on record alone, something the league should have been doing all along in the first place. Talk about peak Western Conference NBA at its finest. A brief mention of the 2018 Denver Nuggets up and coming Jokic after winning 6 straight heading to game 82 against the Jimmy Butler led Timberwolves the season before Joker became an official all star out play call Anthony Towns but stripped by Tosh Gibson with over a second left in a tie game resulting in overtime Minnesota end up winning perhaps the main driver for the league implementing a play in for the 9th and 10th seeds. Minnesota clinched the 8th spot, but no chance against the 65 win Rockets. Jokic and Murray finally got their revenge 5 years later, beating Jimmy Butler in the finals. The 2019 Houston Rockets would have been the 2 seed if they got the job done in game 82. Going 3-0 against the Nuggets would have had the tiebreaker for the 2nd spot, instead settle for the 4th seed, falling to OKC with the 5th and 8th seed separated by 2 games, an absolute travesty of a result, blowing a 17.4 quarter lead, Harden went 0-4 in the 4th, Russ and PG Outscored Houston by themselves the final period, Harden missed the key free throw, resulting in a Paul George game winning bomb. 
One final possession, ball into Harden's hands. If he made the game-winning jumper, could have swung the MVP race between him and Giannis. Being the four seed also meant facing the three-time defending Western Conference champion Golden State Warriors in the second round. Durant ended up getting hurt third quarter of Game 5, but the brilliant play of Steph, Clay, and Draymond closed out the series in six ending the CP3 Harden era for good. Had Houston just won that OKC game and KD got her in the second round, Houston would have had a huge advantage over Golden State come conference finals time, would have been a great chance to knock off an injured Warrior squad and competed in the finals against the Raptors. But starting out the season 11 and 14 with the injury prone Chris Paul heavily regressing from the season before, despite Harden's massive carry job, the consequences forever lives on. Notable mentions includes the 2003 Orlando Magic, had they won their final regular season game, would have been the 7th seed to play the Nets instead of the Pistons, which would have avoided the birth of Doc Rivers' king of 3-1 blown lead shivers. T-Map by himself might have won one or two games worse J Kidd's Nets, but wouldn't have been as painful. Being the first season, the league changed his first round best of 5 format to a best of 7, blowing a 3-1 lead. 2008 Suns screwed to the 6th seed, Utah finished 4 due to winning their division, despite winning one fewer game than the Suns, a Phoenix vs Houston round 1 matchup would have easily favored the Suns, the Rockets played without an injured Yao Ming. These Suns would have eventually lost to Kobe's Lakers, but better than losing in the first round in 5 games to Duncan Spurs. Which one of these teams could have won a title with a puncher's chance if it wasn't for their unfavorable matchup? Could the 93 Rockets pull it off had they beaten Seattle? What about 2004 Sacramento, 2010 Denver? What about the 2015 Spurs, 2019 Rockets? Being in unlucky positions, could one or two teams starting in the 2024 postseason suffer the same consequences? Drop your thoughts on the comments below. Subscribe for more amazing content, for more in-depth NBA history knowledge. If you're an NBA fanatic, you won't want to miss out, and I'll see y'all next time.